tu kerekere ana ngā hau tuarangaranga nei te whenua e rongo taumai tō manaakitanga kia a i o. Kia mau te au mārere, mauri ora kia tātou. Welcome to Mata with me, Mihi Ngārangi Fords, brought to you by Te Māngai Pāho and the Public Interest Journalism Fund. This is our last episode for the year and there's lots to wānanga. We'll be talking to the former Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade, Nanaia Mahuta, about the latest in Gaza. And joining me on the panel is former Labour MP for Northcote, Shannon Halbert, and former Minister uh, for Māori Affairs, Tauhinare, to discuss the latest here at Home Tēnā Kōrua. Kia ora. Kāti uh, kia tahuri o tātou mata ki tāwahi ki pārihi tini. 11,000 Palestinians have now been killed in the latest Gaza conflict, while Israel, Israel has revised the numbers killed in the October 7 Hamas attack to 1,200. Yesterday it was reported 11 New Zealanders were evacuated from Gaza uh, and there are nine more trying to escape with the support of MFAT. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization says Gaza's largest hospital, Al Shifa, is in a perilous situation and not function, functioning as a hospital anymore. And here in Aotearoa, thousands have turned out around the Motu demanding an immediate ceasefire. So to discuss, I'm joined via Zoom by the former Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade, Nanaya Mahuta Ite Tuakana, no mai ki te hōtaka. How do we get, um, you know, talk us through, 11 New Zealanders have been evacuated, nine more to go. Uh, how concerned are you and how does MFAT work with them to get them home? Well, obviously the situation in Gaza is absolutely horrific, the loss of civilian lives, and it continues to escalate is something that uh, we must be concerned about. In terms of the New Zealanders that are over there, we made a very early call as soon as we saw the escalation uh, that was happening and uh, the increased loss of civilian lives to advise people to get out. And we put on uh, some assistance in order to extricate people at that early level. Uh, right now, uh, the, uh, a process for uh, supporting uh, New Zealand residents uh, and citizens to evacuate from Gaza is reliant on a process that Israel has adopted. So they have a number of uh, uh, ex, um, they have a number of nationals, uh, foreign nationals, who apply uh, to uh, evacuate, and they have a list uh, that they regularly go through. So this is the assistance that NFAT is offering. So we're concentrating on getting those New Zealanders home. What is New Zealand doing to assist with this unfolding humanitarian crisis? Well, we made a very early call uh, that the humanitarian uh, crisis was significant and the loss of civilian lives uh, in conflict is always the consequence. Uh, so we uh, have uh, supported uh, aid uh, to go into the area. We've called for a humanitarian a humanitarian pause in order for uh, aid corridors to be opened up uh, so that we can get assistance into Gaza where it's needed most. We've done that via international organisations, the International Red Cross, as well as the World Food Programme. So my uh, most recent uh, briefing, which was on uh, Friday last week, was that uh, our humanitarian aid is credible and proportionate uh, in relation to those other international partners who are also contributing. Will there, will there be New Zealanders there who are choosing not to evacuate? There are, and we had reports of uh, an individual who was working uh, with a UN organisation who did have the ability to leave but chose to stay. Uh, so, you know, people are making their decisions based obviously on uh, the crisis that's unfold unfolding and their ability to respond and help. Um, I think the main thing for New Zealand, though, is that we use our consular services to help those who want to evacuate to do so in a safe way. How concerned are you about those people who have decided to stay? And is there more that we can be doing as a country? We're doing all we can to help those New Zealand citizens to leave. We are working uh, with international partners to use also um, their connections to be able to work together. That's what we do uh, as a small country. We have to work with others. Uh, so I do believe that we're doing all we can. And um, as has been identified, there are some people who are making the decision to stay because they believe that they can help. It's a, it's a harrowing time uh, in Gaza. 
As the caretaker minister, you issued a statement. Um, there's been a couple of reports on that on Gaza, which you would have had to run past National. How much did that temper what you said? Yeah, uh, from the time of the election all the way through until I uh, relinquished my ministerial role, which was at one o'clock on Saturday, uh, all our comments were uh, uh, very much run through uh, the uh, incoming government. Uh, but you can imagine that because these are significant issues, uh, that our generally our foreign policy stance remains very consistent on the issues that are uh, requiring us to take a position. So, for example, on uh, Palestine, we identified the humanitarian catastrophe as a result of the conflict. Uh, we identified that humanitarian aid and support was absolutely necessary, called for a humanitarian truce, called for the unconditional release uh, of those that have been held hostage by Hamas, condemned the actions of Hamas, uh, and um, started to uh, then advocate for a two-state solution, which really is the underlying issue that has been sitting around for at least uh, 60 years since boundaries were drawn, and this festering, unresolved issue uh, has been very persistent, and it's caused intergenerational now um, issues for the people of Palestine in relation uh, to the people of Israel. You know, when you consider the targeting of hospitals and um, and the bombing of a, you know of civilians, innocent civilians in a trapped society, would you go as far to say this is genocide? Well, there are uh, uh, calls to have the uh, matter investigated, and that will be done through the International Criminal Court, of which New Zealand supports. Uh, so that is an assessment that is made. They have had officials that have gone uh, to the border to assess the actions of both Hamas and Israel. They'll uh, comment on the proportionality of a response, which becomes, according to international law, a matter that then is able to peg in a number of consequences. But right now, the focus for New Zealand, as has been the case for many international partners, is to call for a humanitarian pause in order for aid to get through. If we can get a consistent commitment from both Israel and Hamas for a longer humanitarian pause, that then creates the ground uh, for a ceasefire, a real ceasefire of all parties to exist. But until we get to that point, it's going to be very turbulent. When you, you can, you can, all you have to do is watch social media or the news to see, you know, hundreds, thousands of New Zealanders, um, you know, are turning up to rallies and um, sit-ins and prayers. What else can New Zealanders do who feel, you know, mummy with the pictures they're seeing? Well, we need to continue to uh, convey to our uh, domestic uh, populations that. Uh, we have the, the ability to use our voice. Um, we must be a voice uh, that continues to promote uh, social inclusion, uh, respect for diversity, and the ability to uh, ensure that we are working at a diplomatic level with those who have influence as well, which is why we're in conversations with the US to use their influence and, and their role uh, with Israel to highlight that actually across the world, similar protests are happening. Um, and this certainly uh, continues to highlight and amplify that no one can really see what the true end game for Israel looks like. And therefore, we must call for de-escalation. Again, a humanitarian pause, which creates the ground for a ceasefire of all parties, and then accelerate a two-state solution. We... If, you, if you look at all the international uh, narrative across uh, our um, uh, across diplomatic channels, that is very much the thinking that is unfolding in relation to this particular conflict. The incoming Prime Minister Christopher Luxon has announced he won't be going to APEC. How much of a deal is that, do you think? Is it an important place for the Prime Minister to attend? It always is. Uh, New Zealand was the last host of APEC. We did that in a virtual context. It was a little bit innovative. Um, but to talk to uh, economies that belong to APEC and work through what is now a global challenge of responding to uh, a ri rising inflation, economies being constrained in different ways, and what a solution could look like. APEC is that forum to ensure greater economic resilience 
and certainty in this difficult time. Now we have two significant conflicts taking place, Russia and Ukraine and Israel and Gaza, uh, that will have an economic um, burden, that will cause an economic burden across the globe. And APEC is the forum to start to ensure that we're working more collectively and cohesively together to create opportunities, but also to buffer the economic impacts on our populations and across our regions. You've um, had a week um, to reflect now, um, you know, at home, and I guess you've been watching uh, the coalition discussions, the progress of them. Um, what do you make of them? We're into its second week now. What do you think, uh, you know, might be the sticking points? I'm, I'm quite happy to defer to the two uh, uh, in, in the room who, who are also uh, watching. My sense is that um, it's, it's going to be very difficult to get agreement on some very uh, high value issues for each of the parties, which is why we're seeing it take a little bit longer. And we know that uh, Chris Luxon has missed uh, the travel time frame to get to APEC. Uh, so that will be something weighing on his mind because it was a really good opportunity to meet with world leaders. Um, but he, but the decision to stay in and nut out the terms of a solid coalition agreement for certainty is the task at hand. Um, you can imagine that the issues around tax um, create a little bit of conflict between ACT and New Zealand. Uh, first and national. Uh, the issues around the treaty and a referendum is just a hotbed waiting to be uh, lit if anyone's brave enough to do that, and I doubt they will. Uh, there is also the, uh, the management issues because people look at coalitions from the outside in and don't realise just how much uh, work is required to ensure on a day-to-day -day basis at a policy and a strategic level, you have to be working with uh, all parties all the time on mostly every issue because that's what it takes to ensure that people remain on the same page. And um, I know that uh, Toes had some experience there on that front, but when we were last uh, in an arrangement with Winston, uh, even though the terms of the coalition were clearly outlined, in terms of the way that you show respect to a coalition partner, it does require ongoing vigilance around the relationship every day mm. on, on every issue. Kia ora, you've had decades of service now, so no one would begrudge you a big long moi, um, but you've got so much experience. What's next on the cards for you? Oh, there'll be no sleeping, <laughs> no rest, no rest for the wicked. I'll uh, take this time to uh, to have a little bit of a break, and uh, I look forward to the next chapter. Twenty seven years of consecutive service for my electorate to the Labour Party, who have given me so much more than I anticipated, and in terms of opportunities, uh, I'm very grateful and proud of the achievements that I've made over this period of time. Once a politician, always a politician. Um, so it never leaves you. You tend to find yourself making contributions in different ways, um, and hopefully they continue to be valued. Um, and most people are more than more than the title of an MP. So they continue to function in their communities uh, and those groups that they want to serve um, in the best way possible. And yeah, there's so much more to life, I've uh, realised. <laughs> no matter te whiwhi. Tēnei te pai, mihi ana ki a koe te tuakana. Kia ora. Ngā mihi a tira, ki a koe te katoa, ki a koe mihi. Kona nai a mahu te tira kāti, hei matapaki i ngā take tōranga pū o te wā, kua tai mai e tahi atu manuhiri kairangi rawa atu nei. For the first time on Mata, former Labour MP Shannon Halbert and Mata's go-to commentator, Tauhinari, tēnā kōrua. Kia ora. What do you make of Nanaia's kōrero? Oh, top notch. Um, I've got a lot of time for Nanaia. Um, I think she's served her, oh, her party uh, well, I think she served the nation well, you know, and, 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 and I suppose it's an opportunity to give her a pat on the back for a job well done. Mm -hmm. You know, she's, um, she's done what is expected of her and more. And um, she's going to be an asset wherever she, she goes. I do, ho I, I do hope it's not only uh, for Tainui. Yeah, and you, Shannon, so much experience there, just even listening to her um, foreign affairs portfolio and just the knowledge she has in that area. Um, 
she'll be missed. Oh, certainly, and isn't it great to see the made kura of Māori politics, politics really, um, come on our screens once again. Uh, and we can't underestimate the unique point of difference mm. that Nanai's wahine Māori has taken to the world stage, the lens that she puts across um, international issues, and mm. I think we saw some of that today. Yeah. What do you make of your kōrero on Palestine? Um, should Aotearoa be doing more to support um, innocent civ civilians? I think it's a very sad state of affairs that's what that's happening over there uh, and I'm proud actually that New Zealanders in Aotearoa are standing up calling for a ceasefire uh, and what we're seeing here really is uh, a layer of diplomacy from mm. Nanaia um, but also part of a caretaking government that isn't clear on um, the strong response that New Zealanders are calling for here mm. um, and also the absence um, in a sense of an opposition leader being able to come straight out, um, call for the ceasefire, be very clear about what New Zealanders' um, intentions are here. Yeah. Um, let's talk about APEC, because we, we, we've learnt today that um, incoming Prime Minister Christopher Luxon won't be going to APEC. Is that a big deal, Ty? Is he the incoming Prime Minister? I thought it was Winston. <laughs> well, I'm not sure what... <laughs> well, I'm just saying that because that's what everyone else says. I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah. it is him. Yes, it is. Yeah, look, He's leading um, the negotiations. Oh, so. it is. It's, it's important that we, that we do turn up, but sometimes you just can't. Mm. I mean, he's, he, he would go... If he went there, he would go there not really being the Prime Minister. He'd be the stand-in Prime Minister. He'd be the Prime Minister-elect. So um, I, th I think it's important that he uh, sorts his own garden out uh, before anybody else's. Yeah, he's made the right decision. Oh, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. And, and so who will... Is it important for Aotearoa to be... Um, represented at APEC, what will happen now? Yeah, yes, it is important. Um, and I think it's disappointing that Luxon isn't in a position to be able to mm. go. He indicated that he, w he wanted to go and that uh, they'd hoped that they'd be able to form a government at this particular point. When we look at the whakapapa mm. of, um, of APEC, we look back to um, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Yep. Trade is on the table here. Those relationships for an incoming Prime Minister are incredibly important and that is what, what's lost. Mm. But back here at home, they, uh, you know, Christopher Luxon says he's actually pleased with the direction in which the coalition talks are heading. Um, well, how, would we, how would we know? Well, because they're doing it... Um, Secretly. ...differently. That's what the, the, the term is, differently. But, um, I mean, it's now three weeks of special votes. We're moving into the second week of negotiations. You were in our coalition with New Zealand First. I think it's the first, uh, 1996. It took two months. Is this what's expected? Um, and that was only with uh, with two parties. Yes. There's three here. Um, and, and, you know, I just got the sneaky suspicion that the old man is playing the two new young people. Mm. Um, he knows what's at stake. And he knows how to play the game. And... I'm, I'm actually gobsmacked at one thing, that since the election, and including the specials, so we're well over a month and a half, they haven't been in the room together, the three parties. Jingos, you must, you must seriously consider getting all together, and, and even if it's just the three leaders, and having a real ding-dong go at, at sorting something out. Is that bizarre to you, or do you think that actually um, some of the brains around the party should be in there nutting out the bolts first? It's not as buzz it's not bizarre at all. I think you know when we think of Win Winston and his history, he commands respect. He has incredible experience. Uh, this is not his first rodeo, rodeo he, as he talks about, mm. and so he's seriously contending, uh, gone in uh, with what I think are genuine discussions with Luxon and Seymour. However, he knows their inexperience and will play to that. He'll look for every outcome that he can achieve uh, in this term of government, and good on him, I think, and good on New Zealand First. What portfolios do you think will be the kind of sticking points? Um, they're, they're talking about um, law and order looks well. They're all, all in grants to law and order and economy and... Um, the, the distribution of public services. What does that kind of tell you? When I, look, when I look at Winston and somebody says to me, what do you reckon he wants? Old people? Provincial growth? Trees? Um, and, and maybe one other foreign affairs. And, and, and um, I think that's 
where they will be trying to settle for themselves. But don't forget, you've got ACT as well. See, each party believes strongly uh, in, in their little package. Yeah. So you've got David Seymour, um, education, the economy, the treaty, um, and, and national, you've got the, the broad spectrum of a central centrist mm. uh, uh, party. So, you know, I, ju I just don't think it should take too long. I was thinking by this afternoon, and if not this afternoon, by Friday. Um, anything more than Friday is just... Yeah, no, something's going down. Mm. Yeah, well, I think it's time to go back to the polls, maybe. Well, if you get your matakiti on um, and, you know, you're thinking about the, the roles that are important to Māori, do you think Tamapotaka has a shot at Māori development? Oh, um, certainly my relation does have a shot there. I think it's important um, and it would be a backward step if we didn't have a Māori in that particular role. Um, however, I'm, highly, I'm, for, I'm more aspirational too, that I think Tama is able to bring a little bit more um, to the future government. I'm excited for him. Where um, else would you see him? I think he can play an economic role uh, mm. there, uh, looking at some of the uh, rural development, uh, economic development functions. I think he can play a role there with his iwi experience mm. and the work he's done previously. Treaty, uh, treaty settlements works. Could, he be, the, it, could what, he be the treaty settlement minister? Absolutely. Why do I always keep hearing that a Māori cannot be treaty negotiations minister? That's a very good point. I mean, and they say there's a conflict. Okay. Well, isn't there a conflict on the other side as well? That is a very good point, and I'd like somebody to answer that, anyone who's listening. I think it, it was the last government, actually, who said that a Māori couldn't be the treaty negotiations minister. Do you know anything about that? I, I haven't heard about that. I wasn't involved in those, yes. in those discussions. But again, you know, as I say, I'm aspirational for Māori and future governments. Who's on the table to... Who's on the list for a treaty negotiations minister, do you think? Um, well, just, 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 th just thinking, um, what, one of the reasons why Tama couldn't be in that role is because we're seeing our Mōkai Party, a settlement coming through mm. in the next term. That's important. There would be a conflict there. Um, but when I look across the board, few and far between, uh, Chris Pink, I think, is a really um, a, a good man. Uh, he's demonstrated that he can sort of manage some conflict and be sensible, so potentially he would be on, on the table. Wouldn't but that be a conflict? Well, 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 certainly, but I guess when we <laughs> um, look exactly. at the other Māori... I mean, when you're an MP, government. though, when you're an MP uh, and you're, you're a minister, you, you're, you're there because you can do the job, not because mm. there may be some perceived or not well, perceived. Well, you're there representing the Crown. Exactly. So you shouldn't be representing Mōkai Party in the first place. You should be representing mm. the Crown. Yeah. Uh, what about Shane Jones or someone from New Zealand first? And, will, and do you think... Do you have any aspirations for a Ngāpui settlement? Um, uh, 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 yeah, which comes first, Christmas, Santa Claus, or Ngāpuhi Treaty Settlement? <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, you would you would hope, but at the end of the day, I don't really care um, mm. uh, because it's not going to pull our people out of the doldrums of where we are. Yeah. It's not going to offer the North ten bridges and a three, four mm. lane highway all the way to Awanui. I mean, you know, let's get serious. What about Waikato and Ngaitahu? What? What about them? Well, they've settled and are now... Yeah, hang on. Dollars. They were the first two to settle. They Bata? got a, they got a, a very uh, uh, clever ratchet uh, uh, clause deal mm. and they were the early ones. They were the first cabs off the rank. Unfortunately, we're still waiting for the Uber. <laughs> What next for you? If a spot comes up, will you be back in? How does it work? Yeah, I'm two spots away. Um, no doubt there'll be some change and renewal that come, will come through, will through Labour. Willie um, and Calvin? And I'm ready and waiting uh, yeah. to serve the, the mahi that we need to do as a formidable opposition. Are you surprised that some of those Māori MPs who said that if they didn't win these seats, they wouldn't come back and have decided to stay? I think you've got to be respectful around the time that they've served um, and their de decision when to leave. Um, but I, Bro, I think it's, them. it's time that uh, we have to kind of look at where we're at. Um, we need to do some deep, so deep thinking and be respectful and, and manaki of each other. Tau, you make leaving Parliament look so good. What's your advice to Māori MPs who are leaving in 2023? Oh, look, um, think about yourself. Think about your, your family. Um, enjoy every moment that you have. Um, it's, it's a, it, life is wonderful. You know, it's not just about being an MP. And follow your gardening tips. Oh, mate, um, just do whatever. You know, enjoy your backyard. Yeah. 
tēnā kōrua, thank you for joining us today. He pūkinga wai, ka puta te rākau, he pūkinga tangata, ka puta te kōrero. Kua puta, kua kōrena ringa te kōrero, kua kitea, te māra matanga i nai nei, kua tau tēnei matapakinga. Thank you for being with us this year. We'll be back with more in 2024. Ka nui te mihi ki te puna whakatonga rewa me te maangai pāho, i tau toko, i manaaki, i tēnei kaupapa, i amata. Noho rau.